Hello everyone and thanks for coming back. My last video showed the basics of using the Coinbus Pro API with Python. And if you haven't watched that one yet, I recommend taking a look at that first and then coming back here. I will put the link at the top right corner of this video and also in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get updated and notified when I post new videos. Today's video will be about how to handle the asynchronous data coming from the server in real time and how to plot it along with technical indicators in a Jupyter Notebook. More specifically, the video will consist of the following sections. I'll show the libraries required to run this code. Then we will set up a data pipeline with the StreamZ library. I'll give an overview of an improved version of my WebSocket client from the last video. And finally, we'll see how to display data along with the moving average and the RSI using Holoviews. So let's get to the video. This code requires quite a few inputs. The ones you probably expect that are pandas and cbpro from the previous project. Next, I'm using talib for computing technical indicators from the data. This library has been around for a while and is pretty stable by now. You have to install the binaries and then the Python bindings, but it's not very complicated, so I'll put a link in the description to a tutorial on how to install it. Next, I'm using the streamc library to handle the flow of data throughout the project. We'll use the stream class as well as the data frame class. This is a streaming data frame. You can think of it as sort of a wrapper around your pandas data frame, giving it some streaming functionality. For the plots and graphs, we are going to use the Holoviews library with Bouquet as a backend. Holoviews makes the process of displaying data very simple, and I will be exploring this library in more detail in its own separate video. Uh, for now, we just need to import a few things, but the most notable is the buffer class. This is the class that allows us to connect from the streaming data to the plot. And finally, I moved the WebSocket client implementation to a separate Python module so that I can keep the notebook cleaner. I'm just importing it from that module into the project. To control the flow of data, we first create a source stream. Streams can branch out into several substreams so that we can apply different operations on the data at different times. Now we'll create a streaming data frame object to work with tabular data. We need to connect it to a stream, and in this case, we're going to use the source stream that we created before. And we also need to give the constructor a sample pandas data frame so that the object knows what each data push is going to look like. Here we are saying that the data going into the stream will be a pandas data frame with a timestamp and a price column, where the timestamp column is the index. Then we are also going to create a buffer and a stream just for the RSI calculations. The buffer also needs a sample of how the data will be shaped, plus the length. 100 means that it will hold only the last 100 data points received and drop the old ones as new data comes in. Next, the RSI stream will connect to the source stream. This way, anytime the source stream gets new data, that data will flow to this stream as well. That's what I was mentioning earlier about being able to branch out and merge streams. And there are additional methods that can be applied to stream to process the data. For example, to calculate the current RSI, we need a window of the previous price values. So sliding window tells the stream to send the data in tuples of 15 or whatever your window is. Now, every time a new data point comes from the source stream, RSI will collect 15 of them before doing anything. Once the stream has 15 elements, it outputs a tuple of them. In this case, it is a tuple of one row pandas data frames. And that output goes to the map method where it is mapped to a function I defined above for computing the RSI. The function simply takes the tuple returned by its sliding window and concatenates the individual rows into a single pandas data frame. It then uses the talib package to compute the RSI for the entire column. The default window for the RSI function is 14, therefore the output will be a pandas series made of nans except for the last row. We will take that row plus its timestamp index and return it as a one row pandas data frame. Now, back in our main code, we use the method sync to map to a final action of the data through this stream. Sync will receive whatever is the output of the previous function and pass it along to the function we specify now. Here we are taking that one row data frame and sending it to the RSI buffer we define above. Remember that buffer is a Holobius class for plotting. If all of this sounds very convoluted and confusing, it's probably because I'm not doing a very good job at explaining it. But in a moment, I will try to illustrate the concept so that I can kind of clarify the process. Now we are going to take a look at my improved WebSocket class. First, I'm going to create an instance here by passing the streaming data frame and a Boolean flag. I'll show the code for this class now. 
You'll notice a few changes with respect to the last video. I added two extra parameters to the class. The first one is data stream, which expects either a buffer, a stream, or a streaming data frame object. The second parameter is a boolean flag that I use to tell whether to use the real data feed or the sandbox data feed. By default, the program will use sandbox if you don't provide this flag. The rest of the parameters will be the same that the parent class expects. In the init function, first I'm calling the initializer for the parent class with its appropriate arguments, and then I'm dealing with the new parameters that I added for myself. Also, because we need different ways to handle the data stream object because it can be a buffer, a stream, or a streaming data frame, I added a function to select the appropriate one based on the type. I'm also doing this to keep the function onMessage smaller and easier to read. As a result, onMessage now processes the incoming data from Coinbase and then calls the appropriate function to deal with it, as determined in the initializer. Since we are using a streaming data frame, the appropriate function in this case is updateStreamDF. Here we collect the timestamp and the price and put it into a pandas data frame. The emit method is how you can push data through a stream and send it down the pipeline. I will now illustrate more clearly how the data is flowing through the program by going over what I showed before with some graphics. So we have a WebSocket client that is connected to the Coinbase Pro API. On the other side, on the notebook side, we are also creating a streaming data frame SDF. Now, when new data comes in, it gets emitted or sent through the pipeline to whatever it is needed downstream in the code. However, remember that we also created a separate stream for the RSI, which hooks to the source stream and receives the same data. Because of the sliding window we set up before, this stream accumulates incoming data until the window is full, and only then it sends that tuple to our compute RSI function through the map method. This returns a new RSI data point, which is now sent into the RSI buffer to be plotted by the sync method. So I hope this little animation helped make things a little bit clearer. And we are now on the final part of the video. If your objective is mainly algo trading, then visualizing the price may not be a top priority, but the Holobuse package has many powerful APIs that make plotting very simple. And I'm gonna be exploring this library in its own separate video later in the future. But for now, we'll focus on this simple task. So one of the things I like the most about Holobius is how easy it is to add interactive tools to the charts. Like for example, hovering over points to get information or selecting portions of your data. Here I am defining my own hover tool because the default one didn't format the values the way that I wanted. Now I'll create a plot object for the price using Holobius dynamic map. The type of plot is a curve and the stream will be a buffer that reads data from a streaming data frame, SDF. The ops method allows us to further customize the plot and to add the tool we define above. Next, I'm creating another plot for a moving average of 50 points. We do this by using the streaming data frames pandas-like methods. The next one is the RSI plot. For the stream parameter, we simply feed it our RSI buffer object that we defined above. As an extra, here I'm also creating a table plot with the price data. Now, to combine the plots, Holobuse offers simple ways to be able to stitch them together. For example, the plus operator will put two plots side by side. A multiplication operator, or a star, will put both plots on the same graph. So for example, we can have the price and the moving average on the same graph the way that I'm doing here. When we run this cell, we get this chart. In this case, the RSI is underneath because we are indicating that everything should go in one column, but normally the plus sign would put it in one row. The RSI and the moving average will take longer to appear because we are waiting for the, those windows, the 14, the 15 window for the RSI and the 50 window for the moving average of 50 data points to be computed so that we can emit the first values. And finally, here's what a Holobuse table looks like. It is connected to the streaming data frame, so the values update in real time, and I set it so that it will only keep the last 10 values. And I also wanted to mention a few problems that I had with this uh, implementation. One is that the notebook becomes very sluggish and unresponsive after a few minutes, after it has received a few hundred messages from the API. And I'm not sure if it's due to some issue with how Jupyter Notebook handles and manages memory, and I keep having to restart the kernel. But I will be trying this by running a server from Python without using a Jupyter Notebook and see if the problem is still there or is this something related to the notebook. And by now, you have seen how to control the flow of data from Coinbase into the project or application. 
In this case, I use the data for plotting, but you can simply access it and pass it to different functions to make trading decisions. My next video in this Algo trading series will be about implementing simple logic based on data coming in and technical indicators. I'm also going to be making videos about Holobius and Stream C on their own because I think they can be very useful for data science and data visualization in general. So subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated when I post new videos. And as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. And I'll see you in the next video.